Hi, so welcome back to Real Auto Reports right here at Real Auto Ranch. I'm Jonathan McGrew, and today we have the real video, the real review on this 2015 Chrysler 200C. We're going to give you all the details we can think of in a detailed review fashion in the next 15 or so minutes. So let's jump in the driver's seat and get going. All right, so here we are for our real video, the real review on this 2015 Chrysler 200C, all new for 2015 and based on the Fiat US Compact platform, same platform that the Dodge Dart is based on. And the Dart was a pretty impressive vehicle when we have experienced it. So this vehicle, well, it follows that we would hope we would be impressed by this one but we have to give you those details. So as we pull out in this 200C, one of the things that you're gonna notice about this vehicle is the package that we're testing. This is very much a luxury package. It has pretty much all the options added to it. The two-tone interior, the cream leather, the piping on the seats, heated and ventilated front seats. That is something you won't find in any other mid-size car on the market. You'll find other mid-sizes that have heated front and heated rear seats, which unfortunately this car doesn't have rear heated seats, just the heated and ventilated front seats. But it does have other nice features like the memory seats. It has parallel and perpendicular park assist, so it will do it for you. And that is a pretty cool feature to have in this mid-size and just about $36,000 price range as tested. This is the V6 with the all-wheel drive. Again, the all-wheel drive being something rare in this segment. You would have to look at the Subaru brand mainly to see the all-wheel drive in this kind of package. You could also look at the Fusion. This is a vehicle that I really think is going to become fairly popular. It has nice looks. It has come together well from Chrysler. It is a big step up from the previous generation 200C. When you look around the outside, it has a nice curve, a nice just streamlined design. And I think when you look at the front and the side and you go around the car, it does have a kind of more European style to it, which really speaks to the ad campaign that they've been running, imported from Detroit, and then the, well, the, the kind of poking fun at people not wanting to believe that it's actually American made. I think they've done an amazing job with this car. And that's not just lip service. It's not just because we've been long-term testing a 2013 Dodge Charger RT that we personally purchased and have been doing long-term talking and reviews about. In fact, we're coming due for our 20,000 mile review on the car and having it two years. This takes even the technology in our charger from 2013 to the next level. You have a redesigned center console here that is not only functional, but is is pretty cool. You have things like this hideaway area with power ports, including your uh, inverter down here in the bottom. You have your AUX port and your USB insert down here. This is just a neat thing and it's deep. You can actually hide some pretty good sized things down here and then you slide the cup holders back in front of it. Then you also have your console storage here, which is pretty cool as well. And there's an under storage down here underneath this center center stack. Uh, center center stack? Yes, the center console that allows you to place things down below on the rubber mat there. Some other really cool innovative things about this 200C in the new redesign is that you have some nice quality touches in the C, the luxury package. There's stitching on the back of the headrest that just elevate the quality and the kind of the feel of the leather package in this car. You have piping on the seats, you have perforated leather. You have this nice chrome detail around the inside of the wheel with the two-tone wheel in this package. This is really neat, some nice chrome accents around. Now, if you live in a really hot climate with a lot of heat and sun, I bet this metal strip is gonna become a 
blessing and a curse. It's going to look really cool, but it's also going to hurt a little bit when uh, you're in the heat. But you do have a heated steering wheel in this vehicle. You have tilt and telescopic wheel, but it is manual. And you have your memory seats along with your mirrors, your blind spot monitoring, cross path detection, traction control, anti-skid control, and of course the all-wheel drive option that we mentioned that we're testing here as well. You also have this cool feature. Watch the wheel. Yep, it is pulling me back into the lane and I'm not touching the wheel so it's doing it again and I'm now accelerating and it will kind of bounce back and forth and correct you into the lane and then eventually, since I don't have my hands on the wheel as you can see and it is keeping me between the lines, if you continue to bounce back and forth between the lanes, it is going to yell at you and tell you to put your hands on the wheel. And that is a pretty interesting safety feature. This, I think, is really gonna be important for people that drive a lot. Um, you should never drive tired, we know that, but there are times where we don't realize that we are swaying in between the lanes and it is a setting that you can set. It has a three stage. This is set at the medium setting. You can do everything from medium to low to a full correct, uh, a really aggressive correction on that in the Uconnect system, all controlled here from the center. You also have the quick access to your parking feature here where you can turn it on and it'll look for parallel or you can switch it to perpendicular. In this vehicle, you have a very large center color display. You can switch it from the speedometer that I have it on now easily with these large switches. I like the way that they've integrated these into the wheel. They don't seem intrusive, yet they're easy to understand. So you've got your tire pressure monitoring system. You have your driver assistance that will include the lane keep here that we were just showing you. It'll have your fuel economy, trip info A and B, your audio, I mean, just a whole just a whole host of things. And then when you're sitting still, of course, you have your setup screen. It also has, in the speedometer, you can switch it to the sport mode, and it, it has just a different sense about it. Now, it doesn't do some of the cool things like when you put it in sport, the colors in the dash change to red or something like that, like they do in the Lexus brand. You have a nice blue hue in the instrument cluster in this vehicle and I really like the detail that they've put into these instruments. You can see that they have a nice brushed stainless kind of finish on them and speedometer written out, tachometer written out fully. They've put a lot of thought into the kind of experiential part of this car and the what you're going to feel and how you're going to perceive it to bring it into a more high quality experience something that feels more expensive than you're really paying for it to be honest with you and this part of the dash see this part here and how it curves and it's kind of inset there that's very much a la xj from the jaguars if you go and you look at our xjl review with the all-wheel drive in the six cylinder in it you're going to find a this this kind of look very european at the moment and and it harkens to me immediately back to that xj design that kind of cockpit design where the door panels are a lot flatter and in the xj you have the speakers and everything here i like that chrysler is is giving us this new design language i think they've done a great job with it everything's reachable and usable at my height and you can imagine if you were shorter and you were up closer things would still be easy to reach and they haven't done things where the switches are small and tiny and hard to use which we've seen in some brands over the years they're still nice and large switches that get shared with things like the dodge charger but they feel like they fit well into the design of the vehicle so instead of having to redesign a whole set of switches they've been able to design a set of usability features if you will and then integrate them into the language of the cars that they're designing i think that this 200c is a nice vehicle it is about an inch and point six or so inch and a half longer in wheelbase than the dart it has about 
over eight inches in total length over the dart as well. This is going to be at the larger side of the mid-size class, so it's definitely not a small car. But with all the driver assistance packages, front and rear park assist, rear camera, all of these things, it is very drivable. It it does have a few blind spots, but they're they're livable is, is a good word. The mirrors are on the smaller side, but again, you have the nice large triangles that warn you about your blind spot. So again, I don't feel like the car has major concerns from a usability perspective. The main thing for me is this pillar and this roof line where I do kind of bang my head a little bit on this, you know, kind of area over here that I'm tapping on. The Uconnect is an excellent system in this car and some other innovative features that I have to mention as part of this detailed review is the auto brake and the power parking brake in this car. That is a feature you will not find in any other that I know of mid-size car. The standard electronic parking brake is pretty cool and it allows them to integrate it into the safety features where when you're in reverse and you have the auto park assist on with the, the sonar in the back and the camera, if you're not paying attention and it starts to yell at you or you're accelerating in reverse quickly and all of a sudden it reads that something's getting too close, if you have the option enabled, the auto brake feature enabled, it will physically brake the car and help prevent an accident. Same thing with the crash avoidance or the forward collision. It will help prevent an accident by braking as well. And this does have adaptive cruise in it that will also do stop start. That is a lot of features just in that mouthful for a mid-size car in the mid 30 price range. About 36,000 is tested in this vehicle. Now remember, the 200s will start in the low 20s and they max out kind of up here. Remember, you can also get the sport version that may set you back just a few more few more dollars there in the the final price. I think it's worth giving this vehicle a look if you're in the market for a mid-size four-door. It has great trunk capacity. It has decent rear interior leg room. I, I think though this could not replace a 300, which is not supposed to, but it's not going to replace that kind of size in interior capacity. This is a narrower car. It feels tighter. It feels more sport-like. And you're not going to have the rear passenger room. You're also not going to have some of the other rear features like we had on our Dodge Charger, where we have rear heated seats as well as the front and cooled ventil you know, front and ventilated seats in the uh, the front passenger area. It's a car that, in driving it in the snow, even we had snow just the other day. And I thought that this vehicle handled very well. I was actually fairly impressed that the all-wheel drive and the traction control do not seem all that aggressive right at first. It will let you get a little bit loose and a little bit squirrely with this car and then kind of rein you in as it feels it needs to. And I think that's pretty cool because this is a car that is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to appeal to a younger age group. Imported from Detroit, Chrysler is an older brand, but the, this car, you could autocross. It has that kind of power, 295 horsepower, class leading. I think it's worth a look. And from a fuel economy perspective, we've talked about this a bit. This is a vehicle that's gonna get 29 miles per gallon out on the freeway with the all-wheel drive. And that's pretty impressive. If you have the two-wheel drive version, you're gonna see up to 32 miles per gallon out on the freeway. Now, what does that translate to in town? Well, I have my little cheat sheet here, and that is 18 miles per gallon city for the all-wheel drive and 22 miles per gallon combined. Now, if you're looking at the four-cylinder, keep in mind that this vehicle is on the heavier side of the mid-size class as well. So it really needs that 295 horsepower, which is why you're seeing about a six second zero to 60, not a five second zero to 60. If you're going to look at the four cylinder, that's going to be a 184 horsepower inline four cylinder. 
and it, it has a kind of funny name and I wrote it down here just the Tiger Shark Multi Air and that's going to uh, use some of the Fiat technology actually the one the, the, the one thing about that is that you're going to have a different driving experience in the four-cylinder. It's going to seem a little bit less peppy, a little bit more lethargic, and it's definitely going to extend that zero to 60 time. Your fuel economy, however, will, will be okay because you are also taking advantage of the nine-speed automatic transmission. However, we can't promise you that it would be sky rocketing above the v6 pentastar this pentastar is really the crown jewel of the chrysler brand they use this pentastar 3.6 liter v6 in the uh they use it in the wrangler they use it in the let's see they use it in the minivans they use it in the chargers I mean, it's just a whole host of vehicles that they use this Pentastar V6 in, and we've seen it many of times. Heck, they even use it in the Dodge Ram itself. So it is a it is a well positioned engine. It is well sorted, and it is fairly reliable as far as we can tell. And we've tested it many times, so it's worth a look. That's really most of the detail in this redesign that we can talk about today we'll have the real wrap up coming up next and if you have questions or comments or you want to know more about this vehicle we can cover it in a real auto talk so send us your comments post them on our facebook channel subscribe to the channel here we love to build our subscription and, and have more and more people to share our reviews with so make sure you come back for more real videos and we'll have the wrap up coming up next so that's the real video, the real review on this all new 2015 Chrysler 200C. There is a C, there is an S, there is the standard 200. And this C comes with the luxury packages and all of the luxury features that you could expect from German brands out there. In fact, you've probably seen the Chrysler commercials where they're kind of poking fun at that. Imported into Detroit, if you know what I mean. And this is a cool car. 295 horsepower here in the optional Pentastar V6. 29 miles per gallon coming out of the optional all-wheel drive we also have here. But you can get up to 32 miles per gallon in the standard two-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is pretty rare here in the segment. And remember that this vehicle will be competitively priced starting in the low 20s and coming up to an as-tested price with this 200C of $35,900. Your zero to 60 times will be right about six seconds or so, depending on the engine and drive axle setup, but you'll always get that nine speed transmission for the best fuel efficiency and performance. I like this car, I like the redesign, and it's pretty cool that it is leveraging the Dart platform with an extended wheelbase and extended overall body length. You wouldn't know that they're the same, yet it drives crisply and it has a nice personality about it. It actually turns heads out on the road. Chrysler has a lot of innovative technology that we've talked about in this detailed review, including the perpendicular and parallel self park, the auto braking feature with the park assist, and a lot of other class leading and class standard features that are standard on this vehicle that you won't find on the competition, meaning that that automatic and electronic parking brake will only be found on the Chrysler 200 in the midsize segment. This is a car that is worth looking at if you're in the market for a midsize that's on the larger side of the, the scale and has a lot of engine performance and comfort options. I'm Jonathan McGrew right here for Real Auto Reports at Real Auto Ranch, and we hope you come back for more reviews down the road. Be sure to subscribe, tune into our other videos, and we'll see you, well, as we say, down the road.